It's time to get sexy, so watch Secular Sexuality live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash callsex. Hello, 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 and welcome to Talk Heathen. Today is Sunday, November 27th, 2022, and I'm your host, Johnny P. And joining me today is my co-hostess with the co-hostess, Katie Montgomery. (laughs) Katie, how are you doing? Hello. I'm doing okay, thanks. Um, I've been a bit unwell recently, but I'm feeling all right at the moment, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, been stressful times. My work's been a bit stressful. Life is stressful. You know, it's winter or oh, it's autumn. So mm-hmm. autumn's it's the autumn. worst season. You can call well, in about that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, call in about autumn being the worst season. I disagree. First of all, the leaves are falling. They're changing color. They're falling. You get a Christmas in the air. I don't know what your complaint is. Maybe over in merry old England. I have a lot of complaints. I think I think that the fact that you're not in England is what makes a difference. I mean, where you are, it's probably still like the sun comes up sometimes mm-hmm. and like you can still see the sky and it's not raining 100% of the time. Like yeah. everyone's, oh, the leaves go all nice and golden and they fall. Like what happens here is it's like one day it's summer and then pow, the next day it's freezing cold and there's just brown sludge leaves on the floor and there's sideways rain. And it's like that until February. So no <laughs> it's 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 not like each that day here. is worse than the last autumn is like dying winter every single day is longer and nicer and warmer it's like the growth into spring autumn's just like every day you're just like oh remember yesterday that was better <laughs> we're, we're going for full-on uh climate talk we're talking about season <laughs> talk here not not heathenry but uh we're gonna talk get season talk season no <laughs> no holds barred talk season <laughs> you believe what's your favorite uh season and why but until until such yeah. time as we get a caller to tell us that spring's the best uh talk heathen is a live call-in show we have Obviously. open lines so get in your calls at 512-991-9242 or you may call from your computer at tiny.cc slash call th th talk heathen is a product of the atheist community of austin a 501c3 organization dedicated to the promotion of atheism critical thinking secular humanism and the separation of religion and government and boy can we use more of that these days you can support talk heathen and the aca on patreon go to tiny.cc slash patreon th you can like the video below. Nothing's stopping you. Well, I shouldn't. I shouldn't speak for you. F- few, few things are sp- are stopping you from doing so. Comment below. Do you know what your... might be stopping them? Uh-uh. Seasonal affective disorder because it's autumn and it's so awful. So maybe what you should do to snap out of it to get more in a spring vibe, you should click the like button because in spring you'd probably be happy enough to like it. That's true. That, that was what it'd be like for me. So, she, yeah. she, she's playing the long con on this one. She's building the case. By the end of the show, <laughs> all of our viewers are going to be uh, on on Hate Mountain when it comes to when it comes spring to truthers. autumn. <laughs> spring truthers. <laughs> she's she's in, uh, stop the stop the autumn denial. Or uh, yeah. yeah, look, look, like the video, <laughs> subscribe to the channel. You're getting me off my. You're getting me off my script. Me and Darth Dawkins. You know, we're we're on this script. Right. We got to stay on it. Uh, enable notifications. Comment below on your favorite caller. Become a channel member. Click the join button below the video. You get custom chat emotes, and you will help promote the mission 
of Talk Heathen and the Atheist Community of Austin. And below the live chat, we have a fundraiser. 100% of the proceeds go directly to the ACA. YouTube does not charge any fees. You can crush YouTube with that one. You can crush it. <laughs> um, but I tell you what. If you I'll, donated yeah, enough, then yeah. Talk Heathen would be a bigger entity than Google, and then we could buy YouTube off them. And then, oh, yeah. and then it would be better because it would be non-profit. Oh, uh, not the non-profits, though. That's different. The nonprofits <laughs> could yeah. could take over the nonprofit itself, and then it'll be like it'll be a hall of mirrors, turtles all the way down. We've got a. Call. Then it'd be like some kind of prophecy coming true. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a non prophecy. <laughs> we've we've got a caller, and I'd like to go to this caller if that's all right with you. I think it is. Yeah, totally ready. It's Brett. He, him, coming out of the Golden State of California, where they have proper springs and autumns. And uh, Brett wants to talk about we Hi, use sti we use statistics incorrectly when trying to communicate problems with religious culture. That's what I have. Okay. But Brett, Brett, what does that mean? You're on uh, talking. What does either. that mean? Yeah, with with Katie and Johnny, what you got? Hello, and thank you for taking my call. I was actually surprised to be first up, being an atheist. Uh, I was. This is a problem that I've been kind of beating my head against for a little while now. Um, and it started with a study the Pew Research Center did on attitudes in Islamic cultures around the world. And they took this four and a half, five year long study where they went to over 40 countries. They interviewed over 38,000 people and they asked them about whether they support Sharia and if they support Sharia, do they support Hunan punishments, which involve like cutting off the hand if you've stolen something, if they support uh, the death penalty for apostasy or atheism? Okay. I mean, these are what I would consider to be fairly fundamental and important questions to wrap our minds around when talking to the moderate segment of Islamic populations worldwide. Now, I've heard something about this before. Yeah, go on. Go on, please. Please go read the study, um, Attitudes in the Islamic Faith, Pew Research, 2008 to 2012 to 2013, something like that. And yep. they, um, they did an exhaustive study. Uh, the people who did it wrote an actually it's a masterpiece of statistics works as far as i'm concerned they, they did a really thorough job i don't know if they've revisited the question now that we're 10 years on I, I would be extremely interested if they did but my point is take a country like indonesia 200 million muslims and uh, let me backtrack for a moment the study did isolate for moderate islam they took uh, they did not go to countries like uh, Somalia or uh, Iraq. Or, well, Iraq, yeah, a little bit, but not Iran, simply because if they went over there and started asking questions, they'd get a gun in their face. So, I think they did Tur They did Turkey as well, I think, because I, I remember talking about yeah. this study with a friend of mine, uh, an expat out in Turkey, and talked about some of the consequences of the results of this. Uh, this if we're talking about the same study. Please continue. Uh, yes, Turkey was involved in it, and the yeah. consequences of that study, I think, are part of the reason why we don't, haven't seen anything close to it since then. But anyway, right. they isolated for a more moderate population. They didn't go to the more uh, fanatical countries simply because they couldn't. They, um, there were entire segments of, of the populations that weren't counted into it. However, in the countries that they were able to go to, and like I said, they did like 38 to 40 countries, depending on how you're defining it. Um, and they, they talked to thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people. So I figured that at least these experts are telling me it's a good representative sample. You go take a country like Indonesia with 200 million Muslims, the largest Muslim population on the planet. They asked that the first question was qualifier. Do you support Sharia? In Indonesia, that number came around 77%. So if we take that number and equate it to the population with a plus or minus, sure. that's 144 million people. That's almost half the population of the United States of America in one country that support a legal system based off of a religious code that is 1,200 years old. Uh, I, the further question. I guess. 
when when uh, you get um questions like this i mean maybe you're about to go into further questions but sometimes when you ask people something like that like a headline uh question they'll say what they think you know oh yeah yeah of course i support it and then when you go into the like um the details of yep. what that actually yep. means and what it will mean for their life and who they've got to vote for to do it they'll actually disagree because uh we see this often with like um also studies showing supporting groups you say you know do you like support lgbt rights and people will be like oh yeah yeah and then you're like okay cool so that means you support like gay people adopting and they're like ah. and maybe uh, and that i would say that then they don't support lgbt rights but um it might be similar here because i do know that um i know you were saying they were picking maybe more moderate countries but like indonesia does have a part that does have sharia law uh or at least parts of it i don't fully know but um, I think Acer, it's the, yeah, or I don't know really how you say it. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah. Anyway, maybe maybe we're about to go into detail on that. But I guess when if it was like, oh, do seventy percent of Muslims on Earth support Sharia law? Uh, I I would maybe want to see more detail than just one question about that. So right. That yeah. Well. And Brett, so, Brett, Brett. What I'd like to add to that is also we see this in our own country all the time. Uh, I support the Constitution. I support the, you know, the, the traditional understanding of of America. Mm -hmm. And then you ask them what that means. And Which you exactly are where the introduced. Went. Yeah. OK. <laughs> if that's what the, if that's what the survey went, because when you ask Americans what their understanding of what the laws require and, and what we've agreed to in the Constitution, it's horrifying. Uh, the the levels of ignorance. Um that that we mm. see and it was a j j leno did that asking people questions on the street now that was that was doctored of course to just take the 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 least informed answers but um i've had plenty Not of conversations thinking. over the years where people have absolutely no understanding of the the legal system that they live in and that's you know not surprising so but you're saying that the study went into into that so can you give an example of of how it went into a more in-depth understanding of what actually Sharia entails and, and some of the more extreme, uh, what we might call, and I think is more extreme examples of uh, punishments or, or, or whatever. Well, I actually did a statistical breakdown of it on a spreadsheet. Um, I have okay. the numbers here in front of me, and I did this years ago as part of a conversation I was having on a show that I used to host. Um, and the whole concept behind it was to get a better idea of the populations at play here. And I did misspeak earlier, 204 million people as of 2010 identified as Muslims in Indonesia, 72% or 147 million uh, supported Sharia. But like I said earlier, that's a qualifying question. It's a question the statisticians use to isolate a group of people that would have the opinions that they're looking to chart. The next question was, do they support Hunan punishment for theft? And 45% of that 72% agreed that cutting someone's hand off for theft was a good idea. Now, yeah, this equates sure. to 66.3 million people, statistically speaking. Okay. That's double the population exes. Okay. Well, so, so you know, let's say all that's true. And, and I'm not, I'm not going to challenge you on that because I don't have that study in front of me. What is your, what are your thoughts on that? Is it, we got to do something or is it look at how crazy people are or what, what are your thoughts? Because I can see a, a, a lot of directions this could go. Religion poisons everything sure. is one. Another one could be Islam is the worst, worst religion in the world and it must be eradicated is another one. Um, what is, what's your take? I think, what's, I think it's more a question of perspective and scale. Okay. I think okay. that most people in the United States have no concept of the scale of what we're talking about when we talk about and in this case, I'm talking about Islam because I'm working off this one study. But you could do this with fundamental Christianity. You could do this with yeah. Orthodox Judaism. You could do this with a whole assortment of different topics. I'm using this as an example because I have such precise numbers from the Pew yeah. Research Center's study and their population numbers for 2010, which was the time okay. span the study occurred. So my point is, 
that if you're going to talk about how many people, how many, uh, you know, how prevalent is violence against people who leave Islam, even, you know, even just as a general number um, with this one country, if you're talking about the people who are supporting the death penalty for apostasy, okay. the number of people who are thinking that it's a good idea to kill somebody because they have changed their faith, you're talking about 26.5 million people. Now, let that number unspool for a moment as a population. Mm -hmm. If the population of Washington and Oregon got together and decided that anybody who leaves Christianity should have their head cut off, that would be a big deal. But that's just last right. Tuesday in Indonesia. Okay. So when we're talking about these things, we don't use specific enough language because we're we're working with percentages and not whole numbers. Okay. We're working with I, the percentage yeah. of I think I think as a general a, 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 as, I'm sorry, go ahead. Right, hang on. Hang on. Okay. Okay. Just as a general point, I think when anyone gives a number that's just in percentages or just in numbers, it can easily conceal uh, the whole data. I mean, you you can't like it's the classic you can you can prove anything with statistics kind of joke is like um, you, you see this a lot when there's like oh you know there's a ten thousand percent increase in something and actually means there used to be one people one person on earth doing it and now there's like you know hundred or whatever. Um, and it's still not big numbers. So I, I agree with you that when we say like, oh, 20% of whatever support this, then it's also worth saying, well, how many are there on earth? How many are there in this country? How many are there in that country? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's where you're going. Is that like your main argument or? Well, yes. I mean, we're talking about a group of people. If you take all the, the countries, the top 20 countries, and just 20 countries out of, of you know 197 sovereign nations on our 279 sovereign nations on the planet, this one group of moderate Muslims, if you add up the whole numbers calculated through all those countries of people who both support Sharia and support stoning or the death penalty for apostasy, you're talking about a population that's nearly the equivalent of the United States of America. Okay. Uh, I, I, I mean, think that doesn't actually yeah. surprise me. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me either. I think that maybe, I don't think you're going to find anybody here on this show, both in front of or behind the camera, that's going to say that things in Indonesia and Afghanistan and Iraq and Iran and, and Saudi Arabia or, or Qatar, Qatar, are great places to exist for human rights, for religious freedom, and for humanism. Uh, we're not, we're not really, we're not making that case. And maybe folks in, in the in the audience, I don't think there's many people who are watching this show, except for maybe our our Muslim friends who who would call in to challenge us. Uh, the Muslim friends who would agree with us on many things probably think that it's it's atrocious that that's maybe the situation there. And I don't know how they do that juggling act, but. Um, do I you call I, in if, if you're listening. Do yeah. you call in because I want to know. Yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear the yeah. justification for it. But I, I agree with you that using actual numbers. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but using numbers rather than percentages is effective. Um, and I think you know, I think a lot of people who are, are liberal, progressive minded tend to not go after Islam. I don't know if that's part of what the issue is, but you did mention conservative Christianity as well. We tend not to go after focus so much attention on on Islam because in this country, in the United States, and I think probably in the UK, correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, it's it's not a dominant religion. It's not the one calling the balls and strikes on what laws get passed and what you can do with your life. So it's something that happens elsewhere. But as humanists, as as secular people, uh, we need to care about these things. I think you're right. That oh I have I have it bad because my child has to say you know a prayer in school um, yeah well that's the thin end of the wedge let's say in this country but there are people in Saudi Arabia half the population is not even a second class citizen they're they're not even considered mm. uh, equals in any way and um, so we need to expand our 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 sense of 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 humanity to really care about those things. So yeah, maybe approach local problems and keep an eye on these, these international issues um, to try to help. But um, 
Is that where you're going? Because I'm going to give you the last thought, and we're going to move on to our next caller. Well, I, I feel like um, I unintentionally threw the conversation in a wrong direction simply because I was using Islam, this study on Islam. Take any study of a population, especially here in the United States, uh, depending on the study you look at, between 18 and 22 percent of the American population uh, describe themselves as none of the above. The, right. If you want to put it down to atheists in particular, you're talking between five and seven percent of the population. Yeah. Well, transfer those into whole numbers. If you're talking about 20 percent right. of the population, that's over 65 million Americans. That's right. A, that's a considerable number of people. And right. so we're not disagreeing, Brett. Apologies. Yeah. When you're, but the, the end point of this or the perspective I'd like to communicate is okay. that when you are talking to politicians, when you're talking about to leaders and you say 65 million Americans disagree with the idea that religion is a major part of their lives. Why aren't you allowing Democratic candidates to go into politics who are atheists? Why aren't you supporting outreach right. programs so, to non-believing right. communities when you're leaving 60 to 65 million votes on the table? Yeah. So I think um, this is this is kind of a you've yeah, brought around to a good point here. And it's kind of what we mentioned just earlier in the call, which is mm -hmm. when anyone just gives you, mm -hmm. um, you know, one number or another, just a percent or just a raw number, it, you've got to be careful because it can be misleading. But in the same light, I mean, the it is a way of communicating things and you can easily be too um, upfront. You know, you can be very boring with statistics. And the reality is that people do need to hear shock numbers sometimes in order to just get them listening. And if you go up to your um, you know, local politician and say, uh, I think we should be listening to atheists or we should let atheists run, and you say, oh, it's because 15% you know, of this, and then they may just switch off. Or like you say, if you walk up and you say 65 million people are voting and they'll vote for an atheist, then that's a very different uh, prospect. So it is worth considering how you communicate things. Like I'm not at all advocating being deceptive here because mm -hmm. uh, it can be easy to be deceptive in this case um, because you, you could go up and like a million is a lot of people and you could be like, there are a million people who think this and they'll be like, yeah, but what's the percentage of the US? And you know, it's, um, but but combined mm -hmm. when, you, when you think of the best way to deliver the initial news and then have the integrity and numbers to back it up as a, as a actual real position to hold as well, I think that's a good combination. So yeah, I do agree with you that um, just just blindly repeating statistics isn't the best way to uh, win hearts and minds necessarily. And yeah. it's worth picking which things you lead with. Brett, do appreciate your call. We're gonna let you go. I think that's it's a good place for us to 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 keep in mind that we talk about the 29% or whatever percentage that is in the United States who are nuns, who are not religiously affiliated. Now those people aren't necessarily atheists. They may well be, you know, crystal lickers or whatever it is that they call themselves these days. Uh, people who believe in spirits. That's it's true, but that's a lot. That's a huge number. Those are people who are not directly aligned with the overall, uh, well, evangelical Christianity, for example. And there's plenty of people within the religious community who are not evangelical Christianity. They're liberal progressive Christians or uh, what have you. So you're right. Numbers are better than percentages because uh, they're a little bit harder to, uh, gloss over but we're going to let you go and we're going to continue on with the show we do appreciate your calling um if you shop on amazon then you can support the atheist community of austin at no additional cost to you it's true simply visit tiny.cc slash amazon smile aca to, um, and designate the atheist community of austin as your selected charity Amazon will donate a portion of their profit directly to the ACA so we can do more shows and stuff like that. Um, the Talk Heathen merchandise store exists and you should go there uh, to get your favorite items like t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs, as well as beanies, cell phone cases, and tote bags. Uh, bear in mind, folks, that there is a special limited edition item each month so you need to check it out on a regular basis. Otherwise, you're going to miss out. Be sure to check out the store and all the stores of all the other shows that we put out there. We have a channel that houses all of the shows of the ACA in audio podcast form. You don't have to see our shining faces at all. Go to tiny.cc slash AEN podcasts <laughs> to just listen to us. Just listen. You can keep your eyes on the road, people. 
Come on, there's children out there. And of course, you can become a part of the Talk Human <laughs> community in our fan run Facebook page at tiny.cc slash FBTHG. Well, you know what? I've got, uh, we've got a, we've got a litany, a veritable litany, a plethora, if you wish, of callers. And I, I'm going to go with Carlos from Oklahoma. I got a feeling okay. about Carlos. Carlos, um, hi, Carlos. How are you doing? It Hi. says here, it says here, Carlos, we as atheists don't. I think the call screener said, don't ask that question. The answer is yes. <laughs> I'm a call screener, or at least I am at heart. Folks out in the audience, don't ask that question. We can hear you. We'll tell you if we can. Uh, we as atheists don't force our views on people. But when it comes to homosexuality, transgender and pronouns, which I'm fine with. We are forcing, this is what it says. This is what it says. Um, this is not me. We are, and good for you, Carlos. We are forcing those views on <laughs> others. Okay. Tell, tell us what you mean by that. How, What's how the justification are, for that? How are we forcing anybody to do anything? With a gun? Because I don't have a gun. Carlos? Carlos? I'm sorry. Uh, there's a delay. Yes, there is. Okay, Carlos, what do you mean by this? Okay, if the okay, um, actually, guys, what <laughs> what I was saying, what I was saying was this. Okay, I um, when we talk about like mm -hmm. people being hypocrites, right? Like, as an atheist, I don't want your Christian views or your mm -hmm. Christian politics forced on me. You know, I didn't right. ask for it, so right. leave me alone. But right. when we talk about, and, and I do not, my main call was because I do not understand what pronouns, like, mean and why they matter. And I know that's ignorant, but that's why I'm calling to get educated on that. But in okay. the other sense about hip, hip, about. Hip hypocrisy. Do you, uh, hang on, Carlos. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry to interrupt. Hang on. Hang on a yes, sec. Let, we can go on to your. Hang, it's it's fine to go on to your second thing in a sec. I just think the pronoun thing is quite easy. Yeah. I think if I um you know if I was at a party and you were there and Johnny was there <clears throat> and we'd be having a good time a drink, first of all and we I was just like yeah sorry yeah and and you were like oh I need another drink and I said to Johnny oh like Johnny can you get another drink out of the fridge for her. I'm gonna, go get, to I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna go get Carla like, another you, drink from the fridge. Yes. Would Would you Would you be like, oh, that's a bit weird, uh, and maybe even do you think maybe you correct me, or would you just be like, yeah, cool, everyone calls me her all the time, that's fine. I mean, how would what's what, that? That's what we mean by pronouns. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? <clears throat> yeah, and and what a caller, um, Bree, that I talked to in a different show. What she explained to me about pronouns, which is what I'm asking you guys about, is like okay. the hip hypocrisy is this. We're not about forcing pronouns on other people. Well, when I watch the shows and I hear you guys talk about he, she, they, them, and when somebody misidentifies somebody as what they see, are we not holding them accountable for their perspective? Like, is that well, not okay, okay, okay. I, I hear you. I hear you on that. But um, so okay. there's there's uh, there's two two small points here. One I have is, I think that with pronouns, it's just the same as a name, really. I mean, these are just like language things we've made up in order to talk to right. each other. Agreed. So when I'm talking. When I'm talking to you, I don't really need to use your name. But if I'm talking to Johnny about you, maybe after the show, I can be like, oh, do you remember the best caller of the whole show, that guy, Carlos? And he'd be like, yeah. And if I just decided to call you a different name, then, I mean, firstly, it'd be harder to know what was going on. But also, it's a bit disrespectful. You know, you might be like, my name is Carlos. It's the name I've had my whole life. and Or maybe it's the name you chose for yourself or whatever. And I just like, mm, I'm going to call you Sam instead because I don't like the name Carlos. Uh, or you look like a Sam to me. I feel like... I could do that. Like, no one is going to arrest me. Um, hopefully, you wouldn't kill me. You know, there's not any uh, major, serious, life-changing impact for me. But if I did that, you would be like, Katie's quite rude uh, and, like, pointlessly confrontational over something that doesn't really matter to her. 
Um, so I think that's like the first thing. Um, so like, do you do you do you see like the the comparison there? Do you agree with that? I I do agree with that concept, but that's not the point that I was trying to make. What I was trying to okay. say was if 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 I thought my um what I was trying to say was that like am, I am forty eight years old. And I don't remember a lot because I don't know if I can say this on the show, but I smoked that other shit. Oh, crap. I already <laughs> said it. Um, but <laughs> All right. I don't remember a lot. But the main things that I do remember is my embarrassment when I was on a call with somebody from a call center and the lady, she had a very deep voice. And I said, sir. Yeah. I understand okay. your problem, and I'm there to help you. And she was like, I am a ma'am. And I was so apologetic. And I felt mm. so hurt that I I misread that. <clears throat> and there are yep. people out here that don't understand that, like, if if I see you in public and you look like a man, I may call you sir. And if you say I am not a sir, then I will correct that. We are the people that will I think correct that. But that, that's that's cool, though, Carlos. Like I think that you know people like you in like in that sense are great because no one can be right all the time. And sometimes you're trying your best and you get it wrong. And then you know if we were yeah, if we were in a situation and, and you called me he and I said, hey, Carlos, just so you know, I'm actually she. Uh, you know, I'm a woman. Can you not call me the wrong thing? And you were like, oh, of course, sorry. Uh, and then uh, that for me, that would be like the minimum amount of embarrassment. And for you, it would be. And I think that, you know, we'd just move on and then we could be friends. Um, and I understand that some people might give you a bad reaction. Like you say, maybe you, you were talking to this one lady on a course thing and she got really upset at you and, and it's upset you. But I think that, um, you know, it's like in my experience, that that is a, a rarer situation. Um, most of the <clears throat> trans people I know, and not just trans people as well, but like cis people. So cis is a, someone who isn't a trans person. Uh, you don't need to necessarily know these words, but basically people who sometimes get misgendered and called the wrong thing, in general, in my experience, they don't want to cause a scene. They just want to just make sure the person knows and then just move on. And um, like that's the majority of reactions. But of course you meet some people who are just bad people or you meet nice people on a bad right. day who might have, they might, like, she might have had the worst day of her life, and, like, you know, someone might have been insulting her appearance all day, and then it's the last straw, like, the guy in the cool screen got it, like, wrong, and she just lost it, and maybe she's, you know, feels bad about that, maybe she still remembers that call, and's like, man, I wish I could apologise to that Carlos guy. You never know, but I think, in the end, the what you should do is, if someone corrects you, be prepared to apologise once, and then just do your best to get it right in future. But if they're going to be horrible to you about it, when you're trying your best, then you can just think, well, you know what? This person's an idiot. <laughs> um, and it's the same well, as if they were well, being rude to you. Well, that's always else. an option. That's always an option that the other person is an yeah. idiot. Yeah, Johnny. Look, Carlos, I, I've got a friend, and this it's not about me. This is actually a friend. A friend of mine went to go get some boba tea and yeah, uh, got the boat <laughs> right no it's okay. a real friend it's, it's, it's actually my, my friend patrick who i talk about all the time on the show he's the he's the he's the progressive catholic dude wonderful chap hope he's not watching but but uh, whatever he, he's he, he might be uh he he went to a boba tea place and he got his boba tea and which i think is disgusting <clears throat> uh and he said thank you sir to the to the person behind the counter and as he said, thank you, sir, he 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 turned his head to walk away and his eyes zeroed in on a they them pin on the the uh, the attendants, the person's thing. And he felt mortified that he did the that he said the wrong pronoun. He didn't know he's there were there were he didn't catch it. He didn't see the pin. Right. And so he comes to me. Of course, he comes to me. I don't know why he comes to me and he's like, what should I do? And I'm like, don't make a big deal about it. First of all, just don't do it again. Yeah. The person didn't correct you. I said, if you really want to be proactive about it, find a way to work it into conversation. But that's going to be awkward. Just just say they them next time. I'll be honest. This is actually about mm. me. I have inadvertently misgendered plenty of my non-binary friends. I've accidentally done it. I I'm I'm old. Okay, I'm older. My brain is calcified. It's turning into stone. 
and I catch myself or my friends catch me. And what do I do? Sorry, they them. Sorry, they they did that. I do it. I'm not trying to. I promise yeah. you, I'm trying my best. But even trying my best, honestly trying my best, you're going to screw up. Now, um, to the friend that I might accidentally misgender, at this point, my friend can tear into me. Like, get into your damn head, Angel. Right? But to a stranger <laughs> yeah. who, who I accidentally do it to, again, if they flip the frick out, you know this. We all have bad days. Katie said this. I don't want to repeat yeah. what Katie said. We don't know what a person's been through on any particular day. I, I I make a slightly imperfect move on the highway and I get 20 middle fingers and a horn and a tailgating and a screaming and a flashing lights. I'm like, that wasn't warranted. Who the hell knows what that and person's probably, been through? You probably need to stop using that highway, by the way. Just saying. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but, but the truth is, all you can do is do your best. Now, now as, as far as forcing others... No one is actually here forcing anyone to do anything. It's just that actions have consequences. This is an everyday life, right? If I go to if I go to McDonald's and I wouldn't because, you know, it goes right through me. But if I went to McDonald's and I saw a person and they and I said, thank you, sir. And the person said, I'm a I'm a she or I'm a he or I'm a they. And I said, I refuse to do that. I refuse to acknowledge your personal identity and to respect you for who you, whatever. Then I'm the jerk. I'm just the jerk. I have the freedom to do that. But everyone else in the entire universe has the freedom to say, fuck that guy. P pardon my language, but they have the freedom to do that. The difference is, I think, in those areas where there is maybe what we call a fiduciary relationship or a relationship that is more student teacher, doctor patient, um, I don't know, in the law, in other Boston places. Employee. Yeah. Em oh, gosh. Yeah. Em uh, employee, employer, manager, subordinate, whatever you want to call it. Those are the situations where it's different because now you have a situation you maybe can't get out of. You're not going to make to, to a fast food place. <laughs> You're going to a, a work. And everyone... I think we ought to respect a person's need to go to work in this economic system, to make money, to live their life. And if you're a boss or a teacher or a someone like that, and you refuse, you are creating an environment where a person is trying to survive or get ahead in life. And you're just actively trying to make it hard because it makes you feel weird because a person doesn't look like your childhood understandings of what a man or a woman or whatever look like. And, and that's, that's there's the difference for me. So I don't think you're going that far. Yeah. That but that's I think where the distinction well, is. All right. Well, thanks, man. Um, first of all, like what I want you to understand, and I know you guys got other callers, but yeah. what I want you to understand is that that's not my point at all. That's not where I was going at all. And I and what every okay, you, every single, every single thing you said was true. All right, but my point good. is this: when okay, good for it. I say when I say the wrong pronoun, it hurts me deeply. But that is the point. I feel like laymen, just regular citizens that walk into that Starbucks, see that guy behind the counter and says, sir, I would like this and this and this and this and that. And he's like, I am not a sir. I feel that that is the hypocrite uh hypocrisy I, I can't say this shit but i'm sorry i guess but that is the we don't allow christians to force their principles on us but every time somebody get that pronoun wrong and is corrected is that not us forcing our perspective on them I'm confused. Oh, yeah, but if That's you if you walked in, in, if you walked in and like only said swear words and were naked and were like flipping everyone off and like spat on the floor or something, people would be like, "Whoa, mm -hmm. fucking hell, get out of my shop!" Like, what the hell are you doing? Um, but the thing is, 
you could say, well, well, I just don't agree with politeness as a concept. Uh, I, you're forcing your beliefs on me. And the reality is like, you could describe it as, oh, it, it, in, if you meet someone and you don't spit on them, you could say, I, it's my belief that I should spit on every single person I meet. And then you could say, well, actually, most people don't want that, so don't do it. And then you're like, no, you're forcing your beliefs on me. It's like, well, no, like there's a reason behind the fact that we don't want this. There's a reason why it's Liam, unacceptable Liam, to spit on everyone you meet. I'm but sorry. hang on, hang on, hang on. And, and I think there's a reason we have some kind of... That's okay. We have some um, politeness uh, things in, in society, and they're different from culture to culture. But there are some things that humans do to just act out politeness to each other, and it can like diffuse a situation. It can make communication with people you don't know much easier and much safer, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And one of the things we do is just respect people within reason, like a, a basic level of respect that you apply to all people until they prove you otherwise that they don't deserve that you just kind of give that to everyone just to show that you're not hostile. And when we say, oh, you know, this trans person's forcing their beliefs on me, really how I would see it, and I think is a much more realistic description is, everyone's just trying to get on and they're just like, you know, just treat me like a person, just just, just deal with it. And then you're like, no, I'm not gonna respect politeness in this occasion because, because of my beliefs, I don't think you deserve the politeness that I give to everyone else. And then really what you could say, oh, okay, well, any reaction to that is that person forcing their beliefs. But also, you're kind of not just forcing your beliefs onto the person you're talking to, but you're also breaking this like politeness contract. You're you're forcing this uncomfortableness onto them, making their day worse, and also everyone else around you. And I totally agree. If the if um you know you live in a Christian, super Christian country or a super a Muslim country or anything, and they have some kind of custom where they require you to like you know imagine if if there was some country where every time you meet someone you have to say like praise god and then hello or something and i'm even like well i don't believe in god so i'm not going to do that and then they're like well that's really rude here and they're not basically it's my decision the reality is that maybe they consider that rude and it's my decision whether i'm going to be rude and hostile or whether i'm just going to do it to just get on and i think if i did live in a country where um everyone said praise god to each other i would probably make a scene and i would just decide you know what i don't believe this and i'm going to be rude about it but if i was visiting a country where they said that then i probably wouldn't because i don't want to get kicked out of the country it's just respectful to a culture i'm not really part of etc so i think you've just got to consider the situation and i don't think it's hypocritical to say just treat trans people with the respect that like they treat you with and everyone else treats each other with and if it's against your beliefs like maybe it is a good maybe your beliefs are that trans people whatever who cares but the thing is you know you're being unpolite or not you personally Carlos but when when this happens the people who do this they know they're being like disrespectful and impolite and it's just so pointless like what is the point okay you think trans maybe maybe you even think trans people are like subhuman or whatever but like so what like just fucking keep it to yourself it doesn't it's such a like you're ruining someone else's day because what because you can't smile at someone and say hello ma'am like get over yourself like fucking hell it's well, so yeah like self-centered that you have to jam your beliefs into everyone else who's standing around and having to deal with a cringe and like oh get right. life. And, and i think anyway, and i think sorry I think, <laughs> no no i think katie's been saying not you necessarily carlos but how about this yeah yeah if you, one I think it's yeah one. I think it's comparable to seeing somebody with a cross around their neck, right? I don't necessarily agree with all that entails. Okay, I think that the relig that, that that Christianity and all that stuff is is a myth. I don't know if it's true. I I don't believe it's true, um, but I'm not going to walk up to somebody and pick a fight with them over that right? I'm going to deal with that yeah. person, right? I'm not going to say when I, when I have a nice interaction with, with somebody at a store or whatever, and they have a cross and I say, well, you have a nice day, sir. And I say, hail Satan. I don't do that kind of stuff, right? Because I feel that or like, God is dead. God isn't real. You, you believe in a lie. I wouldn't, that's, that's considered, <laughs> that's a terrible rude thing to do. And this doesn't do anything. Now that's if I don't agree with with their what they've what they're presenting to the world it's important to them it, it's part of their identity so if i see somebody 
who maybe in my head, in my, you know, middle-aged head presents as male or female, or I don't know, right? What they're, what's, what they're conveying to the world or for themselves or whatever radiating from their, from their, their being. Um, and I get it. I don't feel like I'm being forced to do anything. I'm just respecting a person's, you know, wishes. I'm, res I'm respecting a person's right to present as they wish. And I'm not trying to challenge it because ultimately it doesn't make a difference. I, another story, another story. <laughs> yes. Okay. I went to a, I went to a comedy show. Great show. It was like people reading from their, their childhood diaries and they would do this little presentation. And it was so embarrassing. And it was great. And there was a person on the stage who I would I probably say is, if I were to guess, this is the non-binary person. They weren't signaling masculine traits. They weren't signaling feminine traits. But it didn't matter to me because, and I'll say this very bluntly, I didn't want to fuck them. I didn't care. It doesn't matter to me. This was a human being doing a show, right? It's and like, like spoken. yeah, exactly. This is just, a, yeah, come on, you know. It's a person. So I'm like, this person's <laughs> funny. This person's doing a good show. My buddy, right, who I don't really talk to anymore, was like, is that a man? Is that a woman? And I'm like, why, Mark? Why? Do you want to go fuck that person? Okay. Because, because I don't understand how in any capacity this is important to you. The person's hilarious and they're doing a show. It makes you uncomfortable because you can't figure it out. Okay. That's a you problem. Fucking deal with it because it's not bothering me. I can't figure out what's going on either. It doesn't matter, right? All that matters is I paid to, to be entertained and I'm entertained. All right. And if it's almost like being like to, I, you know, not to um, compare like being LGBT to like being a religion. Uh, maybe if you compare, you could also say like atheism, but just like a thing that people are. It's like, you know, someone walks on stage and you're like, are they a Christian? Are they an atheist? Like, I, I need to know, like, I must know this information. Yeah. It's not really, it's not important to the situation. I mean, maybe a, a better thing would be like, if someone comes and wearing sunglasses and you're like, do they have blue eyes? Do they have brown eyes? <laughs> like, I'm offended by this. I must yeah, know this must know. key medical piece of information about their yeah. life. Like, right. all right, get over it. I don't actually need to see their eye color in order to laugh at their jokes, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, again, um, Carlos, we're not saying, we're doing a lot of talking. Carlos, we're not saying that you're saying all these yeah. things. Right. We're just saying that like life, life is a, is a, is one of these, one of these phenomenons where you're going to go through the world and you're not going to have all the answers and you're going to make mistakes. And we've got to be a little bit forgiving to each other. Right. But I don't think of a, a person who, who like respectfully corrects you when you get their gender wrong, right. Is forcing themselves on you. I think it's part of that it's part of that inevitable social contract where we're just trying to figure each other, trying to sniff each other out to figure out what this situation is all about. And we're trying to navigate it and that's it. So, so we do have, well, I guess you, another, Pat. maybe. Thank you so another... much. Thank you so much for no um, letting me express this, even though it was broken and I'm sorry I oh, wasted so good. much time on the show, but you guys are awesome. And thank you so much just for giving me some clarity. I really appreciate you guys. Oh, no worries. Thanks Good to have you. In. Katie, um, your last thought on this, and I'm going to let, let Carlos go. Yeah, I, I guess I have another angle on this. And that is like we say, oh, well, maybe we're not like, should we compare this to like a religious person forcing their views on someone? And I think all the arguments that me and Johnny have made here are, are the most important ones. Like the bottom line is like, it's just not a big deal. Get over it. Um, but the second one is, if if people were to start forcing views on each other, forcing atheism on someone would be less immoral than forcing Christianity on people, because it's right. <laughs> it's like saying, well, maybe I'm I'm indoctrinating children into believing that the world is round. We should teach them all different arguments, including flat Earth. Like you're forcing your views onto people. Like, well, no, because the world is round and there is no evidence for a god and gender pronouns are just made up cultural bullshit that we should be able to do whatever we want with so i mean th the main thing is just what's the point in going around offending people for no reason and just being a prick but if you want to be a prick to everyone 
then maybe you should be a critical thinking prick and realize that supporting trans rights is the morally and logically consistent position. So uh, that, that's that's another argument. If you if you're if for the dickheads in the audience, you know, yeah, I know there's some of you, yeah. My Katie, fellow people, <laughs> Katie, Katie, uh, Katie, and Johnny are, are saying that you, we're not making you do anything, but we're going to mock you mercilessly if you decide to be a dickhead. You're, <laughs> you're in our sights. Go ahead, absolutely. Be a prick and uh, see what happens. Right? You will. You will be at the other. At, you will get the short end of the stick, rhetorically speaking. Um, you know what? Um, I want to let everyone know that they need to watch the newest episode of the flagship show of the ACA, The Nonprofits, which will air after the show at 3 p.m. Central. You can go to tiny.cc slash YTNP. And on that show, we've got uh, Richard Gilliver, student Dr. Ben, and Kelly Laughlin talking about a variety of issues that are going to be very interesting to you if I could just get my computer to refresh, and it's not going to do it. So you know what? Just tune in. It's a good, it's a good episode. I know it is. That's a great, it's a great panel. You know, Google Docs just decided to, to put me on the pay no mind list. But anyway, uh, in other <laughs> news, the ACA wants you to know what's going on in our community. And for that, we've got an updated website. Head to www.atheist-community.org where you can learn about the organization, how you get involved, its policies, and what have you. Uh, also, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you like, what you what you thought was effective, what you didn't like, what we thought we could do better, some interesting new ideas. We want to try things out on the show. You can email us. Go ahead at uh, tv at atheist-community.org and let us know. Um, but, you know, we put out a bunch of shows, okay? Talk Heathen, the flagship show, the nonprofits, Secular Sexuality, Truth Wanted, and The Atheist Experience, which is airing later today. If you didn't catch all the shows last week, here's a taste of the things that you missed. And just go ahead and encourage everybody, gay or straight, short or tall, fat or small, to go ahead and give themselves a, a big old orgasm. <laughs> or yes. better yet, give somebody else one. There are some Christians that would say that my Christianity is invalid because if I truly had the Holy Spirit in me, then I wouldn't have you left. You wouldn't have, yeah. So you but weren't actually saved in the first place. My like, Christianity you know. could totally beat up your Christianity. It's like so much more Christian than yours. Oh Can they get the First Amendment out of their mouths if they're not gonna read the whole thing? because it also says Congress may not establish a national religion, but you guys are trying your f damnedest to do that. So read the whole damn thing, would ya? If you don't understand the basic principles of how the science work, how can you possibly critique it? How can you possibly sit here and call up this show and talk to a biologist and say everything in your field of science is absolutely wrong when you can't even give us a single basic, single sentence summary of what you're talking about? If I tell my wife, if you don't love me, I'm going to set you on fire. Am I a loving, good husband? If you set her on fire, then you never loved her to begin with. And if God sends us to hell, he never loved us to begin with. Wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you're muted, Johnny. Damn it! <laughs> why do I do I do that? If you can arrange to be in the Austin area, specifically Austin between December 16th to the 18th, consider joining us in the studio audience at the ACA Free Thought Library for a live broadcasts of Secular Sexuality, Truth Wanted, Talk Heathen, and the Atheist Experience. Doors open at 6 p.m. on Thursday and Friday and noon on Sunday. Parking is in the neighborhood. You can find a, pot, a spot, I promise you. Um, if you can't make it there this month, we want to continue to let you know that we will be broadcasting live from the library the last week of each month. Keep watching the show for news and uh, information. And uh, speaking of being in the local Austin area, if we are looking for additional talented hosts and crew members for the shows, especially for those local shows, uh, in-studio shows. If you're, assist if you're interested in assisting with audio, video, or hosting, and- You're gonna say cis only then. <laughs> cis only. I did not say that. Uh, you could be live in the studio. Email us at tv at atheist-community.org and the production team will be in touch with you. 
I tell you what, we got Jamie Boone. Jamie Boone is back and we get to see him and I love to see him. I have missed him. I wish he had always been with us. But I'll tell you what, we got him back now. I want to talk to Emmanuel. He, him, out of Texas. Emmanuel, yeah, God is the creator of chaos. You're on the air with Katie and Johnny. Uh, chaos. It's chaos. Yeah. What, what do you How mean? How are you guys? You're okay. I'm How feeling very uh, non-chaotic. Yeah. Oh, I'm feeling okay. very ordered. Uh, uh, but... Tell me I more. Just what do you mean by this? Sure that mostly when I talk to you know atheists and stuff, they make like a there's like a common mistake where they make uh, oh this religion said said it also it's not just you know Christianity that's claiming this, but I I don't think that's like totally relevant like in a sense that just because other religions also claim to have God, prophecies and all of that maybe all the religions could have it correct on a certain aspect. Like we might have, you know, differences and, you know, doctrinal differences, but we all have like similar things. So I don't well, want if, to, if all, to make like, okay. Yeah. Sorry. If, if, if all the, um, if all the religions say like the sun rises every day, then yeah, cool. They're all right on that. But if pursue, yeah. I mean, as far as I know, yeah. all the major religions make claims even sometimes directly about each other uh saying they're false and they yeah. can't all be true on everything and and really only at most one of them can be true about the nature of the universe can't they so no no, no. I, I don't believe all are true but i think all have like a similarity kind of thing like the for example abrahamic religions like islam judaism and christianity all believe in one god for example uh they're yeah more... but i mean i guess religions either believe in one god yeah. or more than one god so it's like there's one of the options, yeah. really, isn't it? Okay. Uh, so, okay, let me get to my point. I think my point was not about this. My point uh, was about how I think and how I view the world. Like when bad things happen, like, you know, war, famine, uh, or, you know, like even like the pandemic, for example, what happened recently, I think we could trace it back to God. Uh, you know, as believers. And atheists don't have, like, uh, they don't believe in a God. That's how I understand atheism is. Yeah. So I don't think they have anything to accept natural explanation, but we as a believer, I think, you know, I follow Christianity, which means, like, the scripture is my final authority. So in scriptures, there are things where God puts out people, you know, to war, for example, in the Old Testament, like, where God commands Saul, you know, to kill the entire Amalekites. You know, Saul killed the Amalekites, but we, we see God saying, it is me that killed them. So I think, uh, you know, bad things might happen and chaos happens, but I think the source is God. That's so I'm, I, I would assume um, if you believe in a god who has so I, I guess you could theoretically if we just step back a minute and just just look at all religions all together or just the belief in god in general you could believe in a god that that didn't know anything and just liked creating universes and just made the universe and had no idea what was going to happen it's one big big experiment like that's that's a possible belief but um i don't think that's one held by most or or even all christians i think most like you where you would say Oh, I believe that, you know, God ha knows everything and knows what's going to happen um, and maybe also has some control in the world. And I think if God knows, God knows the future and the past and is all knowing, etc., then even if he didn't step in and directly like conjure up the coronavirus, like, you know, back, back in the Old Testament, God used to just show up and do all kinds of nonsense. And he's just kind of stopped doing that. So obviously, but even if he didn't do that he still created yeah. the universe in a way that it inevitably resulted in the coronavirus, for example, or inevitably resulted in millions of children dying of malaria yeah. every year. Like he, he still yeah. set that in motion. Um, so whether he's directly in like, cause he created the laws of nature apparently. So he either created the laws of yeah. nature to result in this, or he's stepping in personally for some reason to break the laws that he created. And I think regardless of w which one of those two options is true, uh, 
or not true. Yeah. Um, I I think that that makes him an immoral, horrible being. Um, so I I, I feel like it's, it's a bit I I you know I don't actually believe this god exists, and I just believe that nature, you know, leads to these things anyway. Um, and you know maybe I don't know what created the universe. Maybe it was a god. Maybe not. I don't know. But um. I don't have this situation where I have faith in and maybe even love for something I believe created the concept of childhood cancer. So I guess maybe if you want, if you say you believe God's the creator of chaos, like, cool. But like, does that not sit badly with you? Like, isn't this God an absolute monster? Uh, okay. Here's, here's what I think, because if we, you know, you, you're, you're saying that, there's like a First Amendment, right? If wait, 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 stop, stop, thing, stop. Maybe... Emmanuel, Emmanuel, wait. Is your God a monster? No, no, I, I don't believe that. I mean, I okay, can't. Why, why he, is did, your God he did not create a childhood cancer, right? Yeah, he created childhood cancer, so he, why? He just forget... killed a million people with the yeah. coronavirus. Let's forget, about, let's forget about the First Amendment. Let's focus on that. If yeah. uh, your God created childhood cancer yeah. and the coronavirus... Yeah. And uh, didn't give humanity. Oh, oh, forget that. Why is your God not a monster for creating those things? Because your God could have just not created those things, mm. and there'd be two no, less I awful things I in the world. Say, I, I wouldn't say he's a monster or he's evil because I think it's blasphemous, and I don't want to. Oh no 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 no. That's 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 positive. jumping oh. past it. Let's let's just assume. Okay, I'm going to give you a pass on blasphemy. Okay, let's just for the sake of argument, how mm. one could say that your God is a monster uh, for creating childhood cancer and the coronavirus. Could could one say that? Would that make sense to yeah, say that? I, I, or if I said it, how would you disagree? Yeah. And why would you disagree? Besides uh, the uh, fact that saying so would be blasphemy yeah. because you're afraid that that God is going to torture you for all of time. Yeah. So I, I think if you say that, I wouldn't like, you know, I wouldn't say, oh, you're wrong. You shouldn't say that. But I would not say that directly because I think that's like one of the sins that is unforgivable in the New Testament. So I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. I would never want to bait you into you say that, like that? my my goal here isn't to like trick you and send you to hell, Emmanuel. Like no. if, if that's what you believe, I don't want to put you in a horrible, uncomfortable position. I got one I for guess... you. I got one. Wait, wait, Emmanuel. For, for, yeah, wait, wait, ahead. wait. It's not God that's doing it. Okay. It's, um, okay. Ahura Mazda. Okay. Not Yahweh. Okay. Ahura Mazda. Okay. Exists in a parallel okay. universe to our own. Okay. I'm going to give you an out okay. here. Okay. Ahura Mazda. Yeah. Right of Zoroastrianism yeah. created childhood yeah. cancer to uh, yeah. a being, a, a series of beings that are remarkably similar to humans, but they are legally and biblically distinct from human beings. Okay. And yeah, okay. also created the coronavirus spelled differently. There's a P Corona okay. P virus. All right. Legally distinct. Okay. okay? Like Johnny P okay. angel. Okay. Um, okay. Would Ahura Mazda be a monster? Mm -hmm for creating Corona P virus and childhood P cancer. That would be evil. I would say. Oh my God. That would be evil. I wouldn't it? It would be disgusting. What a repulsive, repugnant yeah, entity. That evil. Uhura Mazda. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. That's very evil. But uh, like, yeah. I didn't even make, make my, my point. That's like my point, how I see it. You know, a lot of believers don't agree with me. But uh, even, you know, a lot of Christian, my fellow, you know, brothers in Christ, they don't believe what I believe. But I see, uh, you know, the biblical things, for example, you know, where, you know, Jesus said that I came to separate families. I came with a sword, you know, uh, when he said that he was talking about, you know, persecution and, you know, people dying in the New Testament. So that's why we see. In the book of Acts, when, uh, you know, husband and wife just for tricking the church with their tithing, they, they just died. And God is the one that did that. So I think we could look at, you know, calamities, you know, things that happen, you know, bad things, you know, wars, famines, and all of that, you know, is, is out of the biblical prophecy. That's why I think, you know, scripture is really correct. 
Okay, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, you're 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 all over the place. Um, let's 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 dial this back to to um, you're you're saying that you said something earlier today, and and I and I, I I'm afraid that if I just sometimes that we like to give our callers as much time and as much rope as they need to you know yeah. metaphorically hang themselves. I don't want to do that to you right now. I want to focus on something more specific, and that is you say that the Bible okay. is your ultimate authority, right? And I want to know why. Why the scripture is the ultimate okay. authority? Why? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, can I explain what I mean by ultimate authority? How I understand it? I'd, I'd like you to do that, and I'm going to warn you ahead of time, Emmanuel. I'm going to keep on reining you in if you if you if you diverge from the path of yeah. Stay on top of it. Okay. No offense. It what happens. What I it mean happens. by the Okay, what I mean by that is I believe that, you know, the prophets and the apostles of the New Testament, what they say about my life, I think as a guide path. So I see them, you know, as ultimate figures where I think that they are sent by God. That begs the question. You said, that begs the question, Emmanuel. Why, why, but why do you find that they are the case? You've, you've said... The Bible is the ultimate authority, yeah. and your excuse, your 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 yeah. explanation for that is, you believe that they are a guide path. Why are they a guide path? It, it's the original question. Okay, it's here, just the, yeah. Okay, because I think that you know I think life is very really short, so you know I, I will take the risk of faith. Where if I'm like incorrect, you know about my beliefs and all the stuff, I don't think I, I have nothing to lose. But I just, really? if I just follow the guide of the scriptures, but if I just follow the guide of scriptures, uh, if Which I don't scriptures? follow the guide of the scriptures, and let's say that uh, I don't believe it, but it happened to be true, then, you know, I'm damned. So I would Okay, wait, wait, wait. Kind of but, yeah, but, but, you've made, you know? but you've made a choice, Emmanuel. You've made a choice to not follow the scripture, the the Islamic scriptures, as we've learned earlier today, there's a whole lot. You know, of, you're not a Zoroastrian. Yeah, you're not a Zoroastrian. There's a whole lot of nastiness in the different religions. Yeah. And you have made a choice to follow one cult of religion versus another. You've yeah. you've isolated you. You you've chosen one versus another. Why aren't you afraid of yeah. sparking the wrath of Allah? Because Allah doesn't seem particularly forgiving. You okay. have something to lose. You could be burning in, in Muslim hell. I tell you, I don't want to go there. Aren't you afraid of okay. Muslim hell? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, here, here's why. Here's why. First of all, you don't know. You, you don't fear something that you don't know deeply. So I don't know deeply what the Islamic doctrine is, first of all. So I'm not afraid of that. But I know deeply what the, uh, you know, what Christianity actually claims. I've studied it. I took my time, you know, to study what New Testament actually said. So I'm kind of scared of it. You can't be scared of something you're not aware of. Well, are you hiding there? This, is it? Isn't it? Is yeah. It? What if? What if it's even yeah. scarier? And you, you like you're. Yeah. You know, it's it's like going into the woods or something without looking at what what animals are there. You could be like, oh, I haven't I haven't looked, so I'm fine. But maybe yeah. there's like a bear there that's going to eat you. So yeah, maybe I, it's yeah. good to look. <laughs> I, Emmanuel, I don't want to make you afraid of more things than yeah. your tyrant yeah. God who will torture you for all of eternity such that you can't even criticize him. <laughs> but I'm telling you this, you know that Islam exists. You've heard of it. You know that a billion people mm -hmm. probably follow mm -hmm. Islam. This this is this is a person that came. I'm not even American, so our forty percent of the population in my home country is a Muslim. So I yeah. Yeah. lived around Muslims. So I know right. It's, it's very famous. I know about Islam. Uh, Islam okay. people. You know. I think. So more you know Islam. about it. So it's very so you, popular. I, in our I believe country. you. I believe you. But but why aren't yeah. you afraid of that? Why are you? Why are you because tempting? I don't know the doctrine. It, but maybe maybe uh, another way to look at it, maybe yeah. another way to look at it is, um, yeah. you know, you're you're afraid of, you know, the doctrine of Christianity really well. And obviously hell is utterly terrifying. And so you're scared of it and you don't know, yeah. you know, Islam or maybe a, a much more distant religion. Like, you know, maybe there's some yeah. other religion that I can't think of, like Zoroastrianism or some, mm. some other religion. Yeah. Um, and there's probably someone like you. Well, I mean, there's definitely someone yeah. like you in Islam who yeah. who knows just yeah. the doctrine of Islam and is scared of going to hell 
in that religion and they're making yeah. the same argument as you they're saying well i only know this one and to me this seems like a sensible wager the thing is only one of you is right and what one of you is if the if one of you's right then the other one is going to mm -hmm. that one's hell right so like if you're correct yeah, yeah. and like there's another emmanuel who lives in another country who believes in another religion he's going to your hell but yeah. if he's right you're going to his hell yeah. and i guess as atheists yeah. what what we're trying to say is well if you're if you're saying you know you you're you're making your claims and this other you know different country yeah. emmanuel is is making his claims how do we know which one of you is right? Because me and Johnny, like, maybe Johnny knows Christian scripture really well, but I don't know it super well. Yeah. Um, and if I'm going to spend my time learning scripture, I kind of want to learn the one that's true. Yeah. So how would I know whether I should spend my time on Christianity rather than on Islam or, or right. another religion? Uh, Emmanuel, there's another option available to you as well. You, you have internalized somehow the teachings of a version of Christianity, and you're afraid of that hell, right? And you're going to do your best to, you know, avoid that hell, I guess, even if it means being uh, a defense attorney for a monster god, right? And, and if you're wrong, okay. uh, as no, you, no, and, no, wait, 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 no, Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I'm going to go ahead and mute you. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, we'll get back to you. So if, uh, if you're wrong, I think you've acknowledged that if you're wrong about Christianity being right, well, you did your best. And, um, You'll, you'll deal with the consequences. Now, I don't believe in a monster God that creates cancer or childhood cancer or uh, coronavirus or a Hura Mazda who creates, you know, whatever, uh, legally distinct versions of the same thing in another universe, right? I'm doing my best, right? And if God exists in any form, uh, that God and if that God is just, that God will forgive me. And if that, for, for not believing the, the paucity of evidence, the, the crappy evidence that exists in the world uh, for that God's existence, and if that God doesn't forgive me, well then, so be it. The fact is, if that God can't forgive me for leading a life where I'm earnestly and honestly trying to find the truth, right? And I don't come to the correct, uh, conclusion that that God wants me to be, how the hell am I going to survive in heaven? I'm going to be always on pins and needles, walking on eggshells, always on the brink of damnation constantly for the rest of eternity. You know, we get this idea that once you go to heaven, you're good to go. But we know that that Satan was up in heaven hanging out. I have to tow the party line in heaven or I'm going, I'm assuming I'm going to burn in heaven. I'm going to burn in hell. So that doesn't make any sense to me. There's no way to win. It's a no, it's a Kobayashi Maru. If you're, if you believe in your version of Christianity, you can't possibly win. Either you get bound to hell right after this life, or you get bound to hell a million years ago when you have a stray thought that makes you Luciferian in nature. So I want to unmute you and I, and I want to hear your response to that. Go ahead. You're unmuted. Okay. For, for, first of all, I never said he's a monster god. That's like you're putting words in my mouth. Okay. Uh, what about what I just yeah, said? Yeah, you what did about what yeah. I just said? Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So what I think is God like predetermined for you to be in destruction. So he's like, he created you to, to be judged. You know, I think that we have that kind of, like, yeah. you know. Sounds, that, sounds like a monster god to me. Testament. Yeah. Sounds like a monster god to me. Okay, so I, your god, yeah, your god created. Example? No, no. Well, let me give, let me let me see yeah. if I, I, I. Your example is probably going to ramble, and I'm going to try to be pretty brief about it, <laughs> uncharacteristically. Okay. Um, your god created okay. me to not believe in your god, so your god created me to burn. So your god created me solely for the purpose of being tortured for all of eternity. Yes or no? Uh, correct. I think you have a correct. Um, cool. Disagree. Your God, your God can eat my shorts because I, and, and if your God exists again, I'm doomed. So it doesn't really matter. I don't know why you would worship such a God. That God's a monster. That God's a tyrant. That God's a mob boss. So, so I, I've thought about yeah. this before. I think that, um, you know, it's possible that on one of these shows, someone, maybe even next time you call in Emmanuel, someone will call in and convince me of the Christian God, like, or, or another God. 
Like maybe maybe that's going to happen. Maybe they're yeah. going to deliver that like absolute killer blow um, thing. So now I would be in then a position where I would believe that that god was real, but I would then have a choice yeah, okay. of whether I wanted to worship the god. Um, but the choice would be not a free choice because I would then know that heaven and hell were real. So I would be stuck in this situation where I would have to. I would still think this god was an immoral monster. I I, I know that's not your words, Emmanuel, at all. But it's it's my belief that a god that created a world where there's you know childhood cancer uh, is immoral because he could have created a world without that. I'm in the situation now where I have to um, either worship a god I think is disgustingly immoral, and then suffer forever, or somehow. Um, tell myself to I, I don't know I, I mean from my understanding god can read your thoughts so then i've got to somehow convince myself to never think about this situation which i i i know is immoral i maybe someone can call in and explain to me why children suffering isn't immoral and that would be another thing that would win me over but how i stand on my moral understanding right now there's a few other things that i think are immoral in the bible for example slavery and rape i think those things are disgusting and if god's created a world where they are you know, even exist, or in some cases promoted by him, then I, I think he's immoral. And that, get, that puts me in this kind of garbage position. And I don't know. I don't know if, if I was in that position, what I could really do about it, because mm. I would be terrified of hell and I would want to go to heaven. That's just true. If, if they were true, yeah. that's just a fact. I'm not some hero. I'm not going to take on God, the creator of the universe. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't think I could convince myself that I thought this god was anything other than a monster and I, yeah. I guess that's a position that i would be in i don't know if you're in i don't know i'm not trying to force you to mm -hmm. in the in the situation we don't have to awful, but katie we don't have to you know, that's where i stand emmanuel what if ahura okay. mazda what if ahura mazda created a world in which johnny uh q angel uh <laughs> was born to not believe Wait, P Q P Q Q Angel doesn't believe in Ahura Mazda and then burns in hell for eternity. Was created with the purpose of not believing deliberately by Ahura Mazda. Would Ahura Mazda be a monster god? Uh, yeah, yeah, but I will still worship him if I find out. If yeah, because you're afraid. True. You'd you be know, afraid. it's like yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, be afraid. Okay, so but if someone, like if someone if yeah, someone had a gun. And he was pointing at you and he was telling you to give him money, even though you're not willing to, even though you think he's evil, you're going to submit. So you submit. To I, I would. I would for I would for money. Absolutely. If for if money. this if a guy points a gun at my head and says, give me money, then I would do it. If a guy points a gun at my head and says, like, you know, <laughs> destroy all of my possessions, I right. maybe I could do it. If he put a gun to my head and said, kill like 300 starving children every single day. I couldn't do it. I would just get shot. So there's a there is a limit. Yeah. Thanks. Or if that person put a gun to my head and said, "Believe that I have blue hair," and that person, or there are four right. lights, or whatever. Believe that I'm moral. Believe that I'm moral. <laughs> believe that I that, that my gun is 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 made out of I don't know like cat hair. Ham. I I Ham. could I could fake it. I could act it. I could be like, if, "Oh, I love your blue hair. It's so blue and shiny." Yeah. But la, 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 if he la, could yeah. read my thoughts, I'd yeah. be fucked. Yeah, exactly. That's where you're at. Like, it doesn't sound like you that you love your God, Emmanuel. It sounds like you're just terrified of eternal damnation. Is that right? Wait, wait, wait. If Ahura <laughs> Mazda were to show up and do these things to you and were threatening you with eternal damnation, would you love Ahura Mazda or would you just be afraid of burning for all of time? Okay. Uh, uh Okay, I think there's like two questions within. I, I I don't know which one are you asking me, but I'll I'll try to answer it. So what I think is I I I, I do I'm terrified of judgment, which is very yeah. common. You know, I think it's very yeah, it common. Is. You know, to to fear. You know, an afterlife. It's not just on me. You know, a lot of people are scared of it. So one of the reasons yeah. would be that, but I also have a love for God. Because I read in the New Testament, you know, God has like predetermined, you know, my salvation. And, you know, you know, Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. So I also love him because he has made me free from the law of con condemnation. So 
if anyone I mean that's wants, pretty great. There's, there's no condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm pretty really great, but he's he's love. not made that yeah. He's not made that true for me. Um so I mean if I lived in a country I mean this is quite true of a lot of places, you know, if you live in a, a country and you've got some kind of like fascist dictator in power and they're like, you know, if I lived yeah. there and they were like, right, all white people, um, you know, they, they get their first class citizens and they're, you know, I'm not gonna punish them for crimes and that they're not gonna have to pay taxes and that you know, they, they get an easy life and they always get food given to them. But everyone else gets punished all the time yeah. and has to work as like slaves for people. Yeah. I could be like, I could be in a situation where I'm like, wow, I love this dictator because he's made my life great. Or I could be like, actually, I think this is immoral. Even though he's made my life great, I think the situation around me and other people are suffering so much that this is immoral in my view. And yeah. maybe it's a situation where, you know, we've got some kind of overwatchers and if I even speak out of turn then I will get executed or something maybe I will have to act out some kind of thing in order to survive in the society but I would still know that this was immoral and I would still do my best within the safety of yeah. what I can achieve and you know my power as a single person to try and break this thing apart yeah. because it's garbage um uh, yeah, so I uh, I wouldn't love Jesus okay. even if I was yeah, Emmanuel I hope that you don't subscribe to the idea that I got mine and yeah, I don't that's kind of what it's like. That's what it sounds like. And if that's the case Monday. as a human, I but think that's, what that's I repugnant. It. That's what I believe in. Okay, but, but that's what but I believe. That's great. That's I, I believe that yeah. I believe that that's people whose mind. names Emmanuel, I believe that people whose names begin with A are all left handed. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, right? No, it's I'm nonsense. Not Oh no yeah, no no no! But I believe but it. I believe that. But I believe it. It's true for me. It's true for me. Yeah, it doesn't really. But you could believe it. I mean, I wouldn't be offended if you just say that. You know? Okay, and I believe that all people who okay. claim that they're not left-handed, whose names begin with A, are going to hell, are going yeah. to hell, and should be tortured <laughs> immediately, persistently, care. and continue. I still don't care. Okay, and I'm going That's to. Right. I'm going, and me and people who believe like me are going to. <laughs> Go to Texas, and we're going to get uh, a majority of people <laughs> to pass laws to make sure that people who whose names begin with A, who are actually left-handed but deny that they're left-handed, get put in concentration camps and are forced to use their right oh. hand, and they're tortured every single day until they start being left-handed. And now you start to care, oh. right? And yeah, now you I'll, start I'll to care. care because I'm being tortured. Yeah, yeah. Now you, now you care. Now you care. I'm left-handed. Yeah, and I, yeah. Uh, well, would you believe it, or would you just act it? Yeah. Would, would you actually believe it though? Yeah. You would just you would just yeah. act out the belief, wouldn't you? Because you know what's true. No, no. But you're you're I kind of saying that question. I could change your minds with threats. Like if I just yeah. if I it, yeah, like if yeah. I came up with you, that, that, you, you're actually claiming that. that so yeah, if I if I came at you with a gun, like, if I came up with you with a gun yeah. right now and I said, yeah, I want it, I want you to not change your beliefs based on threats, or I'll shoot you. <laughs> Is that something you could uh, do? Okay. No, no, because if if oh, I I'll do you. that and if I if I deny it, I will be in damnation. So I would choose death over That's damnation. The worst one. Okay. You know. Hey, I, yeah, that's I'll tell you it. what, Emmanuel, um, I appreciate you calling in. Yeah. Gee whiz, I want you to call in more. Um, yeah, I, please I, do. I know Ahura Mazda really wants you to call in. Ahura Mazda wants to find out how much of a monster you think uh, Ahura Mazda is. I, I, I would like to, I don't think we've really got to the, the kind of bottom of why um, you feel confident believing in your religion over another one i know we kind of mentioned it but i think if you call in again that'd be a great like you know thing to discuss around about you know why you've not chosen to learn about other religions because it'd be a big discussion and maybe we can't fit it in now so yeah i'm not i'm not sure that we can we can fit that in um but um i'll tell you what we need to do the top five patrons and um in order to do that i'm going to need the patrons <laughs> from production um and if i don't get it in the next two seconds all right we're gonna move on to david from 
California. Um, David says that the atheist community is judgmental. Um, David, whatever do you mean by that? He says silly, sillily, sillily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got me laughing already. Uh, All right. Good. Sorry. Good, good, good. Uh, I'm judging you for that. Yeah. <laughs> no, what do you mean? I, I, I agree. I agree that it is. But go on. Tell me why you think so. <laughs> well, you didn't give me much time to really make a point. So I'm, I just decided to spend the rest of this time demonstrating my humility. Hey, I'm, I'm here to help. So give me an example. What, why is the atheist community judgmental? Oh, because I've had, okay, I've been listening to you guys, I mean, between atheist experience and talk heathen, I don't really follow the other groups too much. Well, you really should watch or the nonprofit the flagship show of the ACA. It's one of the, it's one of the best. In fact, I would argue it's better than the rest. No, I talk uh, heathen's the best, mate. Well. Apart from on. when Johnny's on. So you watch, you watch these shows. Yeah. You watch these shows. I don't, I don't, and, I don't like and, nonprofit organizations. Okay, well, that's a separate conversation. The that's nonprofits, very interesting. The Nonprofits isn't a nonprofit organization. It's a show on the Atheist the community. The ACA is a nonprofit organization. Yeah, you're oh. calling into a nonprofit organization's <laughs> production. But tell us, yeah, go on, you watch the shows. It's intuitive nonprofit. You're right. Yeah. Well, watch the show. You might you might uh, learn a little bit more about it if you give it. A, it yeah. It's on right after this. But anyway, uh, tiny.cc slash uh, YTNP. So... Why is the atheist community a judgmental? Give me some examples. I, yeah, I don't know. Example. You have to tell me why they're that way. I I don't know why they're that way. But <laughs> I don't really agree. I was with only that. an atheist yeah. as a claim. I I was only an atheist up till I was eighteen, and then I suddenly gained intelligence. But oh, okay, uh, so. Well, I can't. So, but, I can't, but I'm asking you. That was a bit of a judgmental comment, though, wasn't it? Was it was a little judgmental, yeah. It but David, kind of felt like you were calling me stupid. Yeah, David, David, you, you're <laughs> sort of dodging the you're dodging the question. Stupid. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You're you're dodging the question. I'm I'm not asking you why. I'm asking. Give me examples. Let me be more. Yeah, specific. I don't really know what you mean. Still, like, yeah. In, okay. Because when I when uh, I hit off, judgmental, I wanna... oh, you go. Yeah. You go ahead. I, I want to congratulate you on last week's show with the David, David's Cosmo or not Cosmology, but the evolution. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I, I David, know, mate. David, you're muted. All right. And this is me being judgmental. I'm judging that what you're about to say is not what we're here to talk about. And really, honestly, just give me examples in your life that support your position. Why? that atheist community the atheist community is judgmental just give us an example did you did you talk to somebody and they said something mean or did you see katie say something crummy or heaven forbid it would be me but give me an example of some action that of of people in the atheist community that to you exemplifies judgmentalness katie i'm sorry what were you going to say you're to oh, I was just going to say, so for an example, I could say the opposite. I would say that uh, like fundamentalist Christians are judgmental. And, I, I, you know, it's something I actually believe. And an example would be if I found out that my friends were getting a divorce or my friend was having an abortion or that my friends had sex before marriage or something, none of that affects me. So I don't judge them as a person. I don't think it uh, I don't think rationally it changes their quality of contribution to society and it doesn't affect me personally, and it doesn't negatively affect the people around them. Okay. So I wouldn't judge them for it. Whereas I think a lot of Christians would negatively judge those people and would treat them worse and maybe even shun them from the community. So in that way, I think Christians are more judgmental than atheists. And okay. so maybe you could then come back and say, ah, oh, maybe that's true, but atheists are even worse because... And, and here's where your because comes in. Give us an example. Go ahead, David. It's on you. It's balls in your court. Well, this, you just made an example uh, because I was about to give you evidence. And every time I call to give you evidence for the supernatural. All right. So here we are. We're, we're back where we were. We're back right where we're, we're just, at. The reason why we like this, David, is because we've got, this is like how call-in shows work. I'm, I mean, maybe me and Johnny are judging you as a person right now, or maybe not. But the thing is, 
people who watch the show, they see like the little cool thing and, you know, they're going to read the YouTube thumbnail title and stuff. And it's going to be like, someone's calling in about atheists being judgmental. And they're like, oh, wicked. I want to hear about this. Yeah. And if you don't like yeah. do that conversation, I mean, maybe you've got another cool thing to say, but this is the topic you've selected that you you know you 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 said that's the cool screener yeah so this is yeah. what we need to stay on topic so that's right if you could give an example we yeah. can have that conversation yeah and i would love to have that conversation okay. with you right I'm, now. I'm gonna steal man david and i'm gonna put him off mute that his example of the atheist community being judgmental is that we don't let him uh we don't let him give examples of why his religion is true is that it? Is that it, David? Go ahead. Well, you're demonstrating why you're judgmental because uh, you have a hard time listening to what people say, and you automatically yeah, go off show. on spiels about David. David, let me give you a little. Let me give you a little lecture on how. Let me give you a little lecture on how call-in shows work. And maybe you don't know. Maybe you have a call-in show, and it's it's got incredible numbers of viewers. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But we got to move it along, okay? So the prelude, the prologue, the the preface, it doesn't really make for good YouTube. So go ahead. Give me your example of how the atheist community is judgmental outside of trying to move the conversation along, okay? Someone who's not us, yeah. Someone who's not us. I mean, we're judgmental as shit. Well, so please, go on, go on. Give you an, I was, I was going to give you an example about the show that happened last week, and you then you interrupted me. So the okay, show I didn't see last week. week I didn't, see, I didn't see it last week. I didn't see it last week. I didn't see it. So give me another example, because one that the audience who no, may not have seen it. This is my example. This is my okay. example. Okay. Right. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Come on, I've been listening to you yeah, guys. Okay. Just okay. <laughs> I've, been, I've been listening to you guys for probably okay. since 2015. Okay. Right. And in, and in all those videos that were in the comments section, yeah. Yeah. Uh, your adherence, the the virtual cues of the atheist church, uh, the people are endlessly judgmental. They they call me stupid, and then I'm equally oh, arrogant like that. about my stupidity. <laughs> I don't like that. They shouldn't call you stupid, even if you were mm. stupid in the colloquial sense. Yeah, that's not very respectful. Oh, uh, we don't like that. We don't like name calling. Does that make me mm. not judgmental? Because oh, yeah. I'm still judging a person's belief as being. Uh, you know, warranted or not warranted, supported by evidence or not. So you're complaining that people in the comments, you're complaining that YouTube people in the live chat call you stupid. Is that your complaint? Oh, yeah. I've been being abused for seven years by the atheist community. And I'm probably going to have to join mm. the Church of Scientology just to be cleared of this. Okay. Oh, I don't know if Scientologists have an easier ride on the internet, mate. It might be in for a surprise. I think yeah. that um, wh one thing I would say is that, <clears throat> yes, people on the internet are horrible, and that includes atheists. Um, I don't know how much other debating you've done of other arguments. Like, religion is one thing, but maybe you have argued about women's rights or about anti-racism stuff. Or, and you'll find that people on any side of any argument there will be some abusive people and they're yeah. the ones you see if you especially if you're coming into like um you know a chat like you know, if you were to uh be a feminist and you were to go into some men's rights activist mm. youtube mm -hmm. channel and go into the comments they're going to abuse you but also if you're a men's rights activist and you come into a feminist chat they're probably going to not say nice things about you too no. and i'm not trying to both sides this and say that you know one side isn't just as abusive as the other in any argument in lots of these, there is one side that is worse. Um, but I think it's true that even in the nicest disagreement and the nicest groups of people, there's going to be someone who's abusing you and you're going to notice that yeah. the most because they're going to be saying it to you. But I think to then make, if, if you were to say atheists are judgmental, or atheists are abusive, full stop, it kind of sounds to me that like you're saying they're more abusive or they are uniquely abusive or uniquely yeah. judgmental. And I don't, I think that the first part is true. Like some atheists, lots of atheists, maybe even most, I don't know, are judgmental yeah. in some way or abusive sometimes. But to, to suggest that uh, as a group, atheists are worse, I don't think, I don't think that's true. And I don't think there's evidence for it. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you a last word on that. Do you think, uh, David, that atheists are uniquely abusive, more so than, let's say, the, the Westboro Baptist Church or uh, an average evangelical church? Well, 
you you guys apparently think it's an aberration with atheists, but all you got to do is read through my last your last video on the science fiction of evolution with David California on the comment sections, and you're going to find. Hey. David, I, 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 95, you know, hey, you're not going to give, you're not going to give negative. us homework. Oh my gosh, David, you're not giving us homework. We're trying to have a conversation and it sounds like you're not interested in having that conversation. So we're going to move on. If you want to call back, I've just dropped you. If you want to call back and actually have the conversation right here within the confines of this stream, welcome, welcome to have it. Okay. Um, we're going to do the uh, the top five patrons, uh, the top five patrons this week. And I'll read them off unless Katie, why don't you do it? Do you want to do it? It's it's scroll up. It's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Let me it's, do it. It sounds better when you do it anyway. Is... <laughs> and my best, most British accent. Um, our top five patrons this week are number one, Eric Tweet. Number two, num number, no, I'm not doing a good job of it. Number two, number two, Jingle Bree Jackson. <laughs> number three, AME. Number four, the bearded skeptic of TikTok. Uh, by the way, you should all follow um, Atheist Community of Austin's TikTok. Me and Johnny did a little Ooh. live pre show yeah. beforehand, so maybe that's going to be a thing. So you should all follow it. Yeah. Um, and uh, number five is uh, Kale Ver Helvetti. I hope I got that right. An honorable mention this week is to Phantomex, which is a cool word. That's a cool word. It's a cool name. Uh, thank you so much for, for your patronage. We appreciate it. Uh, if anyone out there wants to get on this list, well, you know what to do. Go on uh, on patreon.com, uh, tiny.cc slash Patreon TH, and uh, you can donate funds there. But you, again, you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to give money to support the channel, to support the atheist community of Austin. There's a million things you can do, not the least of which is to share this video with others. Uh, do we have time for one last call? I think we might. Um, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, we don't have time. I've been told we don't have time. Thank you for that quick response. I asked for I asked for the top five patrons, and I got to wait five minutes. But when I asked to take another call, it's easier no. to type no. It's easier yeah. to type no. It sure is. Look. Um, I've had a good time. I really wish that David had come with something for us instead of giving us homework. And maybe that's me being judgmental. I, I'm not entirely sure. But David, call back another week. Give us examples from your own life. And it's to complain that people aren't nice to you on the internet. You know, I'll give you a little pro tip. They're not nice to anybody on the internet. But there are plenty of nice people on the internet. Who want to who want to talk to you and engage with you, but um, look, there are ways you can support the ACA. We talked about Patreon. Uh, you can donate in the chat below. One hundred percent of the proceeds go to the ACA. Uh, you can like the video. You can subscribe. You can share. Like I said, you can join. Uh, click the join button below the video. Uh, you can go to the uh, tiny.cc slash aen podcast to listen to the show. Um, you can become part of the fan run community in our fan run Facebook page at tiny.cc slash FBTHG. You could do what Katie said, and you can go to TikTok and you can keep your eyes peeled. Before the show, we're going to try to do a little TikTok stream to, to get warmed up and to talk with people and maybe get some folks to call in. We this, have some week, great... this week, we were talking about uh, whether Jesus is trans. Yeah, so. right. And, and the jury's out. The jury's out on that one. Um, and of course, after the show, you can make sure to watch uh, the flagship show the nonprofits, which will air at 3 p.m. Central. You can go to tiny.cc slash YTNP. Let's go to the crew. I'm not, I'm not going to, uh, I'm still pointing. <laughs> look, at, crew. look at those crew Yay, folks cat. and crew cat. Um, thank you so much. These are the, po the folks that make the show happen. It's not us. It's them because they can pull the plug on us at any, at any time. Uh, I just do, do want to say as far as crew cats concerned, look, you couldn't just let, Vinny have his moment, Katie. I saw that you couldn't let Vinny have his moment. You had to pull Poppy on the screen. And folks in the chat, tell us, do you prefer crew dog, Vinny, or do you prefer Poppy as far as their uh, appearance today? You know, there's no wrong answers if you choose Vinny. But anyhow, <laughs> um, and, and, and to Poppy and to Vinny and to all the people out there who are trying to be decent human beings, whether you agree with uh, our callers or not, let's get some loverings. And they're out there. Yay. And they're out there. They're they're going they're going low below radar 
right? They can't be, they can't be measured, but I know in my heart that the love rings are going out there. This goes to all the people who are, who are decent human beings and who are having these conversations, who are trying to, to make the world a better place, essential workers, folks who do logistics, folks who are activists trying to preserve the rights of others, folks that are trying to separate church and state, and they're, they're putting their, their stake in the ground and they're not letting it go any further because it's already too far, okay? If you don't believe in all this Ahura Mazda stuff, okay, uh, this is your community. Uh, you can come on down here, share with us your experiences, share your success stories and your failures. We want to know about it. We're all in this one together, okay? But if you do believe, we don't hate you. We're just not convinced. See you next time. We want the truth, so watch Truth Wanted live Friday at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTTW and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call TW.